Um, so I invited him to come to one of the classes so he can see what we teach and how we do, right? And um, so John is right behind you. John is a new agent. Um, none of my existing agents are in here. We've had this room has been full, mm -hmm. right, guys? Oh, yeah. um, half new, half existing, and we're partnering up. But <coughs> John's from uh, Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. and uh, he's been doing this for just a little bit. And uh, Megan is brand spanking new. She actually just signed and joined us on Thursday. Was it? No, Wednesday. Oh, we did it a day early. Yeah. I'm like, just sign right now. Um, <laughs> and Kirk, Kirk has been in, you all know me, I'm sorry. Kirk has been in the business for a long time, longer than me. 29 years. So not much longer than me. <laughs> um, and Kirk joined us in December, November, uh, December of October. Was it October? Why do I keep saying December? That's your anniversary date or year, isn't it? December's your no, no? February or March. 1st. I'm way off on that. Yeah. But it was in 2019, right? Because it was when mm -hmm. I joined leadership. And um, he came from another brokerage. And I'm gonna let him tell a story because this is why he's here. Because Kirk has done a really good job. I'm going to give you guys your things. <clears throat> He's done a really, really good job of working with his Mets. And Mets are people that you already know. Okay? Could be past clients. It could be sphere. It could be your doctor. Just whatever it is, it's someone you already know. So, Kirk, tell them, tell them how well, we changed your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, just real quick. Um, when I came here, um, I tell us I had uh, lots of shoe boxes. If you want to put it that way, but basically, I've been in the business around 25 years, and I had clients going all the way back, and I had file folders in about seven different places, and so they hooked me up with Command, and so as I entered all the people in Command, found out right now I have just shy of a thousand people in my Command. And so um, that has allowed me to identify them and so that I know which ones are my prior, which ones are my top clients, which ones that I just sort of uh, just keep sort of on the back, I won't say the back burner, but I just keep in touch with them. And it's, it's really been um, very useful in being able, uh, the amount of business that I get from that, just being, having it uh, top of mind. I mean, it's, it's uh, every, I have them set up on several different uh, programs. Um, the, uh, the Neighborhood Nurture Program, if you're not familiar with it, I would say get familiar with it. Um, yeah, the, I have them on their home anniversary. And this is, this is something even as a new agent, what I would, if when you put your sphere in, in command, put everybody you know, I don't care if you sold them a house, you didn't sell them, if they're relatives, friends, whatever, you know them, you look them up, you go into, it's really simple. You go into RMLS, you go into the tax tax records, put in their name, pull their information out of when they bought the house and take that, take that home anniversary and set them up in your command to tag them for that home anniversary. And what this does is this starts to give you, um, it starts to build their profile. If you have their phone numbers, if you have their email addresses, like I said, family, friends, uh, whoever you may have, start building your command out of that and by putting all that information in there. What has happened is um, by, by doing that, by keeping that in mind, and I, I basically an hour a day, I get up and I get up and I go in and I have uh, everything set up on a schedule um, and an hour, hour in the morning, I do my command pass. And that includes sending out anniversary letters. I probably should have. Should have one. I do have it here do on you? my computer. Oh. Um, but I have an anniversary letter I send out and it just says, hey, congratulations. You've now been in the home one year, two years. I just sent one out today. They've been, they've owned the house for 30 years. So I'm so <laughs> it's actually a rental. I know what it is. But but you can go in there and if you know if you have friends that are or you have um, people that you know have um, have rentals or any other types of properties, search them pull those in there and create a file for them and send them out an anniversary letter on their rental. 
you'd be surprised. I mean, because now you're making additional contacts. And what happened, uh, I mean, this, you know, I started here in October of 19. And of course, February, March of 20, um, the office shut down. <laughs> so, so pretty much, pretty much. It's only for a couple months, though. Only for a couple months, but you know, COVID hit in, in that period of time. Um, it allowed me to get these all these names out of uh, out of my dad data files, my everything I had in about five different places into command. It took me about a month to get everybody in, and then um, what I do is is I uh, it's, there's a D, uh, DTD DTD do the database twice DTD two. If, if you're not familiar with it, you will be shortly. Um, it's two letters of the alphabet every week for 13 weeks, and then it repeats itself. And so as you're entering them in, match them up with your DTD2 so that you're not like hitting 100 people today and nobody tomorrow. And then this, this sort of spreads them out over the period of time. And then as you build your book, book a business, you'll see that it it gives you, hey, I know what I have to do today. You keep in contact with them. They come up. You put them on the neighborhood nurture. You um, and then when they when they say reach out to you and say, hey, we're ready to buy a house, then it goes the buy buy monthly neighborhood nurture instead of the monthly neighborhood nurture. It just you give it. You're just getting them a couple more times. Uh, I use that along with RMLS because um, if you only use if you're only hitting them. Uh, twice a month, I'm going to tell you what, you're not going to get them. No. You've got to hit them every day right now, especially. Yeah. But but couple that with RMLS. And if you're not familiar with the RMLS, there's a prospect profile page. I teach them. You teach them. Oh, uh, put yeah. that in. Okay. <laughs> and you do it. <laughs> as soon as you get a client, you get their criteria, set them up, set them up with their criteria and have that mailed out to them. And, and, and it'll, as new listings come up, You'll be notified and it goes to your clients and it's at least twice a day and sometimes more to the clients. To you, I think I get emails probably about five times a day of what's going out. So you'll be getting, so it's, it's real time um, information on the new mm -hmm. listings and, and the properties that they're going to be interested in. So you're not missing out because the last thing you want to do is hey, a house come up yesterday that they liked but it was sold last night and they didn't get to see it until tomorrow. So, so just make sure you, you use the resources you have. Um, and that's, that's what I would, I mean, and, and automate it. Automate it <coughs> as much as possible because right now you may have a lot of time, but as you get busier and busier, you wanna make sure these things are going out on a regular basis. You wanna make sure they're being hit, even if you get caught up in you know in an inspection or an appointment or anything like that you want you want to make sure that your, your clients still think you're thinking about them whether you're you know even if you go on vacation they still think you're thinking about them so automate it as much as possible and uh yeah. and <laughs> Kirk, how long did it take you to get all because he had it in his email he had to search the email for their contact information get it all over the place how long did it take you to organize so that you can start to it took me let's see i started in october and i believe it took me about two months originally and um and then I believe it was about two months to start your spreadsheet. Yeah, to get to get everything in command. Yeah. yeah. And then setting up everything. And then so see the sooner you guys get all that kind of like organized and then it becomes a habit. Everything's about building habits, right? If you're building the habit, then it's so much easier to keep doing that habit than to go, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, I don't know what to do, and I don't want to miss because you're gonna lose a client and then you're gonna go. Oh my gosh, I need to systematize this because that one client loss will just oh. it can be ten thousand dollars. <laughs> it's going to kill you, right? So now the other thing, do you guys, it, um, whatever calendar you use, I have I happen to use a Google Calendar that's hooked up to uh, the K, KW email. Um, <clears throat> I I time go in there and do your time blocking on that, and put your notifications on that, um, and make sure. Because of legal advice, make sure you block yourself at least two hours a week 
for paperwork <laughs> because it'll keep you out of trouble. Yeah, that's, so, he's talking like getting your your once once you once you get right? under a contract into the system and stuff. Well, once once you're under contract with something, um, <clears throat> Kelly is going to want to see your paperwork. You're probably going to have to go with them, you know, a little bit more hands on. But I have I have two hours a week time blocked on Tuesdays and Thursdays to do nothing but your my transaction paperwork. And then it doesn't, once you're used to it, it doesn't take you that long. It's basically just, you just upload it in there. You, you, you know, upload it in command, you send it off to Kelly and, and, you know, he'll come back and they'll say, hey, okay, you need to do this or he'll approve it and it goes on through. Um, but do, do, as you're doing your time block, as you're doing your lead search, make sure you also have that follow-up time to be able to, to uh, make sure your paperwork is done because that'll stick, keep you, out, that'll keep you on good terms with everybody. And then so, how much did your business grow um, from actually having a system to meet, to talk to everybody and like well, you saw <clears throat> searched and yeah. yeah um, I, I don't know. Some of you may know the backstory. Um, one of the reasons I'm here was in, I think, in, uh, <laughs> time flies when we're out yeah, of fun. About, <laughs> Three and a half years ago, yeah, three and a half years ago, I suffered what my doctor called a massive stroke. And um, what they what they told me is I basically have lost a quarter of my brain. And um, the company I was with at the time, um, I was struggling. And then six months after that, um, my wife and I lost uh, a, a daughter and a grandson, which is still. Well, we actually go in Monday to see where the, where it's at right now. Um, it's uh, it's before the U uh, U.S. Supreme Court right now, the case. And so I went in and I told my previous company, I says I need some help. And the words I got from them, these words directly from my bro principal broker's mouth was, "We're not here for that. If you can't make it on your own, tough." And I was I've been with them nine years. And I sit there and I go, this isn't going to work. I got to do something different. And so um, one of the individuals I was working with had come to this office a few months earlier. And so I asked her, I said, how do you like it? She said, I like it. So I came over and um, it's been one of the best moves. I will say the support you get, the, the, the information you get, the, the systems that are in place are some of the best in the business. And I've been through, I've seen a lot of them. And, uh, but I will tell you um, that, uh, that those, those life events changed my life and brought me here. Now, the systems that was available here has allowed me to put my, to make my business uh, basically on automation. And I can work more efficient. I can work, um, I can work with more people, I can do a better job, and I have more free time. So the sooner you, I mean, it's, it, we're, you're always gonna have these transactions. I had one just recently was a mess and you're sitting there and you're, you're saying, what in the heck's going on? But knowing that you have the company behind you is, can be really, uh, really important. And, uh, and like I said, you got a lot of support here, a lot of, a lot of wealth and knowledge in this office. And they'll be more than happy to sit down. I, uh, I mean, when I first came over, I talked to most all of them, and uh, just it's just been a really nice place to be. So, but the big biggest thing is, I tell you, get the names in your database and and get going because they're not going to come to you. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. They're, 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 <laughs> you got and uh, so, but I do a lot with bowling. That happens to be one of my one of my. Uh, my my uh, favorite things is bowling, so that's I do a lot of stuff to bowling. Right, we talked about that. Chris, you don't know yet, but we, I, I talk about it all the time. Find something you love to do and use that as your networking source. Right? If you have a few of them, even better. <laughs> right? Go ahead. I just had a quick question. First, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, and then second, for somewhat like I feel like a lot of us probably have people like on Instagram that we talk with through like direct messaging but mm -hmm. if we don't have their phone number or is, the, is that the most efficient there's not like some place we can 
look online to uh well you can google anything yeah. and if you want to pay okay. for a service to actually get their contact information you can absolutely do that okay. and sometimes it's efficient to do that however if it's someone that you talk to all the time on direct messaging or whatever yeah just say hey you know i'm i'm working on updating mm -hmm. all my contact information and i realize i don't have your phone number can i have it mm -hmm. like yeah. They'll either say yes or no. Yeah, we're saying, saying no. Right? Yeah. If they say no, you still got their email. Yeah. yeah. Right? So and then you get on that with us. Yeah. And so, like, it's, yeah, that's what I mean. I, if you look at my database, I have, um, I think about 65% of them, I have their phone numbers. About 65% or 70%, I have their emails. Um, the, I only have in my database the only addresses I have are the actual homeowners uh, unless i happen to get their if they're a renter i if i happen to get their address i'll have it but otherwise i probably only have and i have about i think 65 70 percent of my database i have addresses for and then the so other your health score is pretty good on there command yeah. actually has a health score yeah my health score yeah yeah it's um like mine is relatively good i bet <laughs> uh, the the other thing that um i mean i think that's what we're talking about the other thing that to do and this is this is some of the things that you know when we're talking about touching you're on there what's one of the what's one of the events you see all the time they say hey it's my birthday or you know you get to pop up this birthday mm -hmm. put them in your command go into command and put them in their birthday mm -hmm. now next year when their birthday comes up you send them out a letter five days before their birthday and you call them two days before and, and you just you just sit, sit you know send out a, a cheap and because they don't know that it's you know, you go down to the dollar store or whatever and get buy you a pack of just inexpensive birthday cards and just say just want to wish you a happy birthday and send it to them yeah. people like getting mail <coughs> and, uh, and hope that's they what like the personal touches yeah. right we don't have that now everything's technology right so the more personal we can be it actually stands out because we care right well, I'll, I'll pull this up because i think this will give you an idea do you know your login on command? Is that what we're pulling out? Is your command? No. no. My command will pull up automatically. I don't have to go into it. No. <laughs> Same here. You've seen me struggling. A command I know my password is like that. Everything else. Actually, I do know, actually, I do know my password on command, I believe. I have it on my computer. Oh. Now, so. <laughs> this is what I want to show. I think today is pretty cool. I shouldn't go over. <laughs> well, he's pulling this up. Did you guys do any lead generation? I prep this week. You prep for lead gen? That's good. We're working on it, right? Okay. okay. So, no appointments. Yeah, I mean, look at that. This is this is Next the anniversary week. letter that I send out. And um, if you want to just pass it around and look or at just, it, look in and just look at it. But it's really simple. Hmm. And it's I don't and uh, cry, Chris. <laughs> you know, all it says is hello, and I write in their name here. And then when you go in, you find out how many years they've lived at the house, you fill in the number of years. I can, yeah, I, can, I, can, I can use my mouse. <laughs> then, and then um, I actually have partnered with Barb Nelson on these. So I don't know if you guys know her or not. She's a newer agent as well down in the And then I sign it. And with this, I just insert a couple business cards and, uh, and I send it out to them. Yeah, uh oh, good uh, job. <laughs> you feel free to reach out with any of you real estate needs. Oh, your... there you go. Correct it. Good job, John. We yeah. all can do that. So, y'all need to make sure you have someone. Have someone that we meet in here. Do you mind proofing my stuff, right? That's great, though. Yeah. Wait, so you just you email these things? Don't everybody no. mail? Uh, he hand mail mails. Mail. Snail mail. Oh. Yeah, I get. I just get a. Uh, I just get uh, package of envelopes, and I just every day it'll come up um, in the command. But up here, 
If you look here in command, the third one down mm -hmm. is your activities. Mm -hmm. And so I have it, um, I have it set up, I put in their home anniversary. So the date will be down there. And then about five days before their actual home anniversary, it can it hits this task bar. Okay. And so it gives me about five days to send that out. Do you choose like how much lead time you have to actually? No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, I'm yeah. glad I made it. Uh, kill me. Sam, you know, when you go into your contacts mm -hmm. you and have them, that's kicking me out. <laughs> The internet's going really slow in here. Oh, no Wi-Fi it is. Yeah, no Wi-Fi. Is yeah, we've got Tyler working on figuring out what that is. I like to be hardwired. I kept just getting error messages trying to do searches on RMLS. It just kept like yeah. out yeah. Austin. Yeah. Anyway, when you go in, when you go in, in and area. you set up your contacts and command, it'll have you um, uh, on the Opportunities to ask the list. Mm -hmm. They will down on that. You'll have um, home anniversary is one of the options. And so when you enter in, when you enter in their home anniversary date down below, mm -hmm. and, you, and you tag it for home anniversary, it automatically puts it in. It's a date triggered event. Birthdays, 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 birthdays are too. So if, if you have that information in there, just put put in home anniversary over in in the. Um, Opportunities tasks. A um, smart plans. A smart plans. That's, mm -hmm. smart That's all right. Smart it's plans. one of the things mm -hmm. that he has issues with. <laughs> That's, but anyway, it just, it just triggers it. And so um, it's not going to. That's all right. So you, but you had to go in and manually look up everybody's yeah. uh, home anniversary in RMLS and enter like over a thousand people. Well, some of them we had because they were past clients. Yeah, we had a thousand people in mind. But okay. you will. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's, you will. It's Everybody really, will. It's really, that's why I say if you just set aside like an hour a day for a command task. Okay. So, I mean, you're right. It's overwhelming. You're going to sit there. I mean, I sat in here. I probably overdid it. I sat in here for three or four hours. A day just doing nothing but data entry i mean that's mm -hmm. what i did um i did get some of it uploaded from uh scott roy, scott roy but then i had to go back in and i had to edit, edit it all and, so, and then now, now i'm i'm finding that some of it still isn't edited correctly so i'm having to as as they come through i go in and i make the corrections and i go from there do you hear how much easier it is to start from the beginning yeah. <laughs> so but but yeah, if you just go in there, you enter the information, it comes up, it becomes an opportunity. And I don't know if you read in that, but one of the things in that anniversary letter said, if you know of anybody, if you or if you know of anyone else who is looking to buy or sell a home, please give me a call. Mm -hmm. So you don't just ask, you don't just, you, you say congratulations, but then you ask. Yeah. And that can, and you know, that's obviously, it's, it's just the, the, the snail mail, the asking, and the, you know that they get something. It's, it's just I found it to be very, very productive. I mean, it's well worth. I don't know where do I spend. Um, <laughs> I probably spend fifty dollars a month. And that includes postage. And by Kirk, everything that Kirk has done with his database from what he did before, he he grew like people started responding reaching back out to him again that he was missing because he it was just emails or phone calls that he didn't remember to call or, or to text or or That's mail a lot um, of so he he got a big surplus of people where he had other agents in our office helping like here help this client because he didn't have the time so i mean it really increased yeah. um it's just like i said if you start from the beginning you're, you're not going to end up what I had to do for was <laughs> for a period of time, but but yeah, go go in, you know, friends, family. If you're, you know, school, you know, if you have kids in school, uh, if you are members of clubs, you know, get get the club list. Uh, you know, if, uh, um, whatever you do, uh, if you got a list of names, everyone else, let's put it like this, no one else is doing it, so do it. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Um, 
you, yeah, if you if you get Here's your first database right here. Yeah, you have your cell your cell phone. Yeah, but yeah, you just go in and you know if you're a church, there's another one. Get the membership list from the church, and just and just go in and um, and just go in and download all their information. You know, look it up on the, on the in RMLS. Find out their home anniversary. You don't need their phone number or email address to start. All you need is their home anniversary. Put it in there. Yeah. And you'll you'll be you'll be able to uh, jumpstart your business because the agent that sold them here. Have you guys heard the statistic about? Have you shared the statistic about? I love home? stats. <laughs> of the of the people who have bought or sold a home, eighty percent of them say they would use the same realtor they used before how many do you actually how many do you think actually use the same realtor they used before less than 10 percent wow whoa and the reason because they're not saying touch. and the reason for it not is they're one and done yeah, the agents are sending them or they're, they're, they're well i did such a great job that they're going to just kind of come back to yeah. me yeah, they're, they're transactional agents. They do the transaction and then they're done. They don't follow up with anything else. And while you're working with clients, you know, keep your, I always tell people, keep your ears open. You know, you hear of them say, yeah, our anniversary is next month. Oh, it is. What day is it on? Straight down. Write it down. It's actually, it's right here. Hey, phone you know, now, um, right? our, it's, our, it's our kid's birthday. It's, we have a birthday party to go to. Oh yeah, whose birthday is it? Write it, it down. down. So, so yeah. use all this, use all this stuff to get this information into your, into your database. So, so that's, I mean, it's, it, it's stuff they're sharing and you know, everyone's well, it's like, I'm spying. No, you're not. They're sharing. They're it sharing. You. They gave it to you. you know, it's out there, you know, they're, whether it's on Instagram or on Facebook or whether, or wherever you're at, they're sharing that information with you. Yeah. Write it down. I, I pick up a lot of my birthdays on Facebook. Facebook, oh, it's my birthday today. Okay, fine. Go yeah. over and I put it in, I, I update, update their information with their birthday. Um, so just, just <coughs> use all the resources because what will happen is, is now instead of the agent that goes out there and sells them a house and then they never hear from them again for 15, 20 years or if ever, now you're the agent that goes out there, help them buy their home. And now you're showing them, hey, Wow, they're still in touch with me. They even know my birthday. They think, wow, it's been a year since I bought this house. I just, I have a letter going out today, 30 years since they bought their first home. You know, so it's he, does, just, he does the handwritten letters for the annual, and then you do an email with inviting them to do a CMA, right? For the right. six months. Right. So, so yeah, you, um, and if they want an updated value, I put it right. I, I, I take them to our website where they can do their quick CMA. And you know if they go in and do that, that you get email from that. Mm -hmm. that okay. So when you do that, just just pick it up. Say, hey, would you like a would you like a real CMA? I know this was a fit a quick one for you. Would you like a real one? Just a quick question about those those yeah. private CMAs. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure they're not as accurate, but do they tend to underestimate or overestimate? No, it is just does. It, it'll take the address. And it'll do homes that are sold around it. Yeah, it doesn't really do a CMA. So it, it doesn't like filter out ones that wouldn't uh, qualify as the same type of property. Okay, so, so it's just any property it's, that's sold, not and it tells them taking square yeah. footage or bedrooms or anything like right. that. And it lets them know that it is an estimated CMA. Your if you like a, a professional one, your your realtor will follow up with you. Yeah. Right. So how often are you like, oh, they like get their club CMA and then you like do a real CMA and it's like seventy thousand dollars less than what so they're here's, and you're like, mm -hmm. here's what I do, right? <coughs> they go in and they fill out their address, all they have to do is put their address and then click the button and then it takes them to where they have to put in their their name and their email address so that it'll email them the report. They can add their square footage and their phone number if they want. Okay. Um, if it's already a client then we should have that but what happens is as soon as they do that it sends them an email with a report like within less than a minute 60 yeah. seconds 30 seconds Quick. and it tells them flat out that this is an estimated report your your realtor will put your name on there will reach out to you to go over this with you then you get an email with a copy of the report 
and, the, and it shows the exact email that went to that person. So now you should, because they did the report because they want to know what their houses were, right? So you should pull up the report, look at the comps, see if it falls in line, if there's any that need to come out, or maybe some need to come in, and then follow up with them and say, hey, I was taking a look at the report that you, that you just requested. I see that this house shouldn't be on there. The price needs to be adjusted by this much, right? The range or whatever. It starts the conversation for you. And what are, what are you getting a refi? Are you thinking about selling? Are you looking at doing a cash out, right? What are you trying to do? And I'd love to help you. And, and even, even on like, are you doing a refi? And then say, well, have you looked at Keller Mortgage? Yeah. And because as soon as they go in and, um, and you tag them and they hit on your Keller Mortgage, you get emailed letting them know, like you know, message. and text that, that they have applied with Keller Mortgage. Yeah, and they're saving money, and they, even on a refi. Yeah, and they and then also the the um, the mortgage officer with Keller Mortgage will reach out to you and say so and so has contacted me, and then um, they will go through you if they need additional information. It is, it is really. I mean, I know there's a lot of other lenders I use as well in addition to Keller Mortgage. But, you know, if, what you're trying to do is get those interactions. You're trying to get those touches. Yeah. You're trying to keep them engaged with you and not be, you know, not be at dinner some night and somebody says, oh, well, you know, yeah, we were thinking about buying a house. Yeah, we talked to somebody two months ago, but we haven't heard from them since. <laughs> no, you just lost Don't the that, right? So that, yeah. that's what I would tell you. It's just, um, yeah, just, just you. And like I said, you, once, they, once you put them in your opportunities, once they become a client and they're, they're going to buy within one year, you move them into opportunities. I have, which I pull, pulled it up on there. I think I, I think in my live opportunities right now, I have 48 possible transactions with probable GCI of around 300,000 and potential GCI of over 500,000. So, so that's why it's, it's cool that it tells you that. And, and, right? and, and it, as you enter them in there, I could go back and I would pull it up. But as it goes in there, you'll see your as you enter them in, it'll show you how how much you enter in. It'll show you your growth. Yeah, it'll, it'll show you your at the bottom is a is a graph with the with the months. And remember, we talked about the roller coaster, real estate roller coaster that we're on. Well, if you're doing this, that means that you're not consistently talking to your people so your business dips down when you're in the middle of a transaction because you're too busy dealing with that transaction and you're not bringing in anything new so you end up on this up and down right so that graph shows you that you're steady either hopefully steady growing up or at least leveling out right which means we're doing everything we need to do but if you start to dip down the first thing you need to know to tell yourself is i didn't do my lead generation yeah. Right. I, I would tell you to have a healthy business in, in, in when you're getting work, you should have in your opportunities, you should probably have between 20 and 25 active people searching at any given time, whether it's as a seller or whether it's as a buyer. <laughs> and that will, that will begin to level out your business. Um, if you have less, if you only have a handful, you're going to, you're going you're gonna to have, you're going to ride the roller coaster. Yeah. But you need to have, I would, I would probably, I would shoot for having 25 active, engaged clients in your opportunities at any given time. Yeah. Any questions for Kurt? No, we got to dive in. I got like two hours of okay. teaching. Okay, well, I'll let you, I'll let you go. <laughs> Kurt, you can stay if you want. Do you want one of these? You probably know it all. I know. You can take it, study it, do your homework. Do my homework. Thanks for driving all the way up from McMinnville. I really appreciate it. No, not a problem. I guess. And you're welcome to stay. Yeah, I probably better. I got, <laughs> I got a couple. You gotta things. go. Yeah, I gotta. Chris. Yeah. Did you do your lead gen this week? Oh, you thought I was talking to you, Chris. I have a few Chris's here. <laughs> I haven't been able to keep up with. But you know, Darren, some. Did you make any appointments this week? Yeah, I had an appointment this morning. Yeah. Are they going to work with you? Uh, they are. Fantastic. If they decide to do an house, or whenever they decide to do something, so it's like the first. That's awesome. So that's two weeks in a row that you got an appointment. Which book would you like this time? Uh, we got the MREA. We got the MREI. 
The investor? Is that the one thing and the ship. I've got those two and the. And you don't have the MREI? I, I so we're going to investor. Is it different than these three? I think I might have had it, but it was like that size. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. This one? Yeah. You don't no. reach out to your I don't know. Yeah. So. You want the blue one? Yeah. Awesome. Ah, oh, I need my set. <laughs> I had lunch. Oh, okay. You know I don't get lunch often. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna power through a little bit of this. Um, introduction. Okay, do I need to go through this every time? Yeah. <clears throat> Arrive on time. Form groups quickly, be fully present, which means turn off your phones. And I like this one the most. Turn off your phones or vibrate. Um, respect reality time, participation, respect the learning styles, help each other. Confidentiality in here, right? We don't share what others have told us unless they say we can. And commit your time. Have fun. We always have fun, right? Exercise where are you today? This is what I do right at the beginning. Who did appointments? Who did lead gen to make sure because the whole goal of this series is to get you guys doing the daily activities of lead generation, right? So that we can reach how many closings? 36. In what time? One year. With three hours of lead gen. LG. <laughs> okay, this is what we're doing. We're building our, our building blocks for a good foundation for a business, right? Um, and look, we're halfway ish. Awesome, right? Working with maps. We've, we've learned what our USP is, what's our, um, our uh, value, our 30 second elevator pitch. We're using that to talk to our people. If you haven't done it yet, you need to do that. And <clears throat> now we're going to move forward. So like Kirk was saying, <coughs> sorry. If you don't stay in touch with people, they go away, right? Even in our daily life. If we don't stay in touch with our people, they're going to go out of our lives, right? So your database, as you grow in your business, your database is like, without it, you don't have a business, right? And when, when we talk about, when you guys first joined us about um, your legacy, right? Leaving behind a legacy. Well, part of that is the ability that you have grown this amazing, wonderful business, your database, and now you can pass it on to someone else and still get benefits from it, right? Referral business, ongoing income, because you built something that is sustainable. You've done a great job of marketing, prospecting, working with them, doing what you said your value is. And now they want, they want to continue working with you, but they understand and respect the fact that you are retiring. Maybe, and you're also young, you got a long ways to go. But uh, you want to be able to hand it off and not just like take all that time and energy and then just throw it away, right? So uh, it's really important to make sure that your people know that you're an agent. Your friends and your family, you guys, if you don't tell them over and over again, they'll forget, right? You can't just assume, and anybody. I'm a real estate agent. I got my license. I'm selling real estate now. Well, we don't talk to them about it. it it's going to be heartbreaking, actually, when you go to check a regular phone call. Hey, what's new? And they're like, oh, we just moved into a new house. Oh, what? Why didn't you use me? Oh, I forgot you were a realtor. We got to show it all the time in every possible way. But even more importantly, like John, John comes from Santa Cruz. Referrals, right? Build the referral business. If you're from somewhere else, you build that up. We had agents at Keller Williams who their sole practice is referrals. 
from agent to agent all over the world. They get some local, right? Because they do everything they need to do to do that, but they have more referrals than anyone else because they focus on that. And the relationships between the agents as well, right? So it's not just relationships with clients, it's relationships with um, the agents on the other end. Okay, so we all know what mats are, right? Oh, it's gonna be a great experience because we're gonna participate, right? All right, who's your mat? People we know. People you met. <laughs> I know, it's really cheesy. <laughs> Well, but it's right. <laughs> okay, so people that you already met, people you've known all your life, people that maybe you see them all the time, but you haven't like formally met them, right? You've got to get into the habit of engaging, gathering contact information, no matter where you're at. I do it when I'm at a restaurant. Every single person that works at Starbucks knows my name. I pull up, hi, Tom! It's a video, right? <laughs> they know who I am. I've given all of them my business card. I've recruited people in from meeting them through a waitress, right? Because I liked the way they did stuff. But in real estate wise, you guys can do the same thing. I talk to people waiting in line at, at, at Target. Long line, kids dinking around, look at the mom in the eyes, like, oh, I totally get it, ready for a drink, right? Engage in a conversation. And you, some people don't like that, but some people really like that you're talking to them, right? And I think now more than ever, people like that we talk to them because a lot of people have been closed up and not engaging around people all the time. So, Make everything that you do all the time. If you are involved in a group that is so big, but you haven't like formally met everybody in there, do it. And if you don't have that, find one. I have a question. Yes. <clears throat> um, so one of my best friends is, he's a, a tech recruiter and he, he has his own uh, recruiting business up in Tacoma. And he, his, basically his business is, finding engineers in the tech industry and hooking them up with companies or companies hire him to find engineers. To find so, <coughs> companies from all over the world. All over the world, all over the country. Awesome. Um, if I talked to him and, cause I already talked to him and said, hey, do you ever have people moving into Portland? He said, not really. It's mostly Silicon uh, Valley and Seattle areas. Could I ask him that when he is hiring somebody to tell me, and then I can refer that person to somebody in Seattle or whatever, even though I've never met the person, I have no. If he hasn't built a relationship with an agent already on that, yeah, he should. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I would. I mean, if you know him, I would ask. He's one of my best friends. Then, then absolutely. Okay. I just know, like, right? if I don't know so, the person that I'm referring, I'm just like a middleman who's collecting a paycheck, right. which is fine with But me, it doesn't but, matter, but you're going to learn who they are, yeah. right? And a great place to start with that is your leadership team, because Washington is in our region, mm -hmm. and every single week we're on calls with leaders of all the market centers. Mm -hmm. And so we can actually help guide you to it. We can call them up, hey, who's your best agent for this? and then connect you right there. Or you can go into KW, look at the referrals and do the search like we talked about. Mm -hmm. Find an agent that has a good production, good numbers in the exact area that that person's going, give them a call, mm -hmm. bet them online. Like I always Google search them and call them and see if they're one first. If their voicemail's full, skip. <laughs> they're too busy to even have their voicemail available right? Gone. If you leave a voicemail and they don't call back, skip. I just go right on to the next one. And I do that until I get to some, I give them like an hour, a couple hours to call me back. But then I move it on because I want to get someone for them. Right. And then I'm going to have a full on conversation, get to know them casual, right? Like 
Talk about their business. How long have you lived in that area? Because you want someone that knows the area for, for a referral, right? So I just like to find someone that's like me mm -hmm. because it came to me. Trust me, that one's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna want a good professional person that knows the, the specific area that they're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's simple. It is simple and easy. And if it's a friend, your best friend, just flat out ask them. Yeah. Help me, I'll help you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all guys, exciting. Yeah, if you don't do that, then they're likely just to, you know, go somewhere up there and then go to like Zillow or anywhere. anywhere. Or, you know, like they're probably just shooting in the dark. Yeah. Right? Unless somebody gives them a recommendation. Yeah. And if I can. You can go off the back end myself. Right. <laughs> and then you talk to that agent mm -hmm. that, hey, my buddy sends people out all the time. You do a great job with this client. I'll make you my referral source for all of them. Mm -hmm. They're going to do a good job if they want business. And everybody wants business. Right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We were going right into this. So, but you meet them. What do we have to do with them? Feed them. If you don't put it in there, when we talked about the index cards all over the place, that was hurt, right? Don't do that. Just spend months just feeding your database. Okay. Who are your maps? Where do they come from? <coughs> Can you read that? Your network group, individuals you know because you have met them either in person or by phone. These people might do business with you. Um, allied resources, a very select subset of your met group who are in real estate related fields. Individuals you expect either to do business with you or to receive business leads from every year. They will or have done business with you. So think about that's like your, your, your painters, your plumbers, your interior designers, right? Just anything in that, any kind of real estate related field, uh, lenders. Um, title companies, title companies may do the closings, but they all know someone. They might want to buy a house, right? Your advocates. So this is people, this is like your past clients um, that are going to do business with you again, or they're going to send people your way because they loved what you did, right? And then your core advocates. So these people not only can or will do business with you, but they're in a place where they have um, influence, right? Like, a, sorry, I keep walking in front of it. Like a sports team, the owner of it, a large corporation, your friend who brings in tech people. That's huge, right? Those are your core advocates. They love you, they want to help you, and they're going to send people to you. Steady stream of clients. All right, so. Supposed to do an exercise. <laughs> Who wants to do the exercise? Oh, yeah. oh does anyone have yellow pages? <laughs> <laughs> it's a book. There's a yellow book in Korea, but it's a yellow book in here. Yeah, no, we don't have one here. <laughs> no, I know. I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> um, okay, so basically, it's like, we did this in one of our other classes um, where I gave a list of like, you know, an accountant, a doctor, a hairdresser, a barber, right? Whatever it is. And then you write down all the people you know in that. So the exercise is for us to go through the Rolodex, find out who we know and add them to our database. Okay. Do that on, in your Legion tomorrow. No, tomorrow's Saturday. Monday. You guys get days off. For Legion, because <laughs> you're going to be too busy showing houses, doing open houses, door knocking. All right. Uh, this is just like a, how many do you need? Well, we know we need 36, right? <laughs> we need 36 closings. So to do that with a 12 to two ratio, because you can expect two cells for every 12 names in your database, I think that might be a little bit high, but if it's people you already met and you already know, that is a pretty good ratio, okay? 
So then you would need to have 216 contacts in your database. It's not hard. <coughs> if I have 800 on my phone alone, I've gone through and I've like, finally, because you know, every time you go get a new phone, it takes forever for them to, to transport it. Mine's mostly pictures, but <laughs> the contacts takes a while. So I finally went through it and I went, okay, I don't need AT&T because that was like long time ago, right? And then just actually taking the time and going through your phone, deleting the contacts that you don't know or you don't need. And then at the same time, you're plugging them into your computer, right? Into your database. So if you write this down, so we're gonna, we're gonna change this because, well, this is your MET database, right? You're also gonna have your lead database. Anybody that we're going to meet, that we're going to do ads for, we're going to get them to come in, we're going to add them in there. But a good solid database is a minimum of 300 people. That's your, that's your starter goal, right? Remember, uh, we talked about Ignite. You guys are going to take that next month. 10 new people in your database every day. 10 contacts a day, 10 people in your database. And then after, what is that, 20? No, that's uh, uh, 50 a week. And then within a couple months, you'll have 300, right? Less than two months. Right? Come on, I need someone to do math for I didn't hear the numbers. Uh, 10 a day, five days a week. 50 a week. 50 a week. So about a month and a half, you'll have 300 people in your database. If you do that, and you got a good start because I know everybody has lots of people in their phone. And you have friends on social media. You have friends on social media that aren't on your phone. They're in social media and you talk to them and then they might have requested to be your friend. Put them in your database. It doesn't, even if they're in your database, doesn't mean that you have to do anything with it. Doesn't mean that they're going to get contacted. You can work your way towards that, right? That becomes a conversation. Hey, I'm working on my database. I've created this amazing newsletter that I'm sending out every month. I'd love to send it to you. Are you good with it? Would you like that? It shows stats about the market and, or whatever you want it to be, right? Information about what's happening in the area. I need your email address. Bam, now you updated. You had a reason to call and you updated your database. And now they're, they're a much better potential to become a closing, right? Okay, here's a money one. How many do you guys want? <laughs> Look at the quote, size matters, said Godzilla, an international movie star. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So how many Mets do you guys want to have? Oh, there's no limit. Right? Uh, let me see if they have this on here. No, around 11. Back. Okay. So on page 11 is a good idea of how much, what your potential income is. Now, this potential income in here, you guys, is based on national average, not Keller Williams Portland Premier average, which this is $7,500 commission. What's ours average? 12.5. Right? And that's not even our real average. That's our, that's my new agent average, right? Our real ad average is much higher than that. So at, at the seven, five, look how much money you can make. Well, we already know, cause I did the numbers for the 36 transactions. So the one that they've got highlighted there across the middle, if you did 36 transactions in 12 months, what was that? It was 36 at 12, five. What, wasn't that $450,000 GCI, right? Who wants $450,000 GCI in one year? John does, Megan does, Chris does. Chris, do you want it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretend, it, you can do it, you guys. If you do everything in these courses that we're doing and you actually do your three hours of lead gen every day, and you enter people in, it's up to you guys to do it. You can reach it, okay? 
Networking. Myth, if you build it, they will come. So if I went out and I had a food truck, cause that's a quick build, right? And I just park it somewhere and it's all pretty. And I sit and I wait and I wait and I wait. Am I gonna get business? Maybe, right? $450,000 No, and I'm not marketing because I parked it in a good spot, I think. Right? Every single business, no matter what it is, has to market, right? You have to go find your clients. Look at what everybody does, all the commercials. We don't, we can't afford to do commercials, right? Every so time, every time. Slow days for allergies. <laughs> By the time I reach the class and talk, my nose starts to run. Because it's cold in here. Thousands and thousands, millions of dollars in Super Bowl for an ad to get business to come to them, right? You guys, you have it so easy today. You have social media. You can do a social media ad for $25 and get your face out there and get people to come to you. Simple little ad. When I started, it was newspapers and magazines, and it was minimum $250 a week for a little tiny space. And we had to do it. So it was mandatory marketing dollars that we had to do. Otherwise, we didn't get business because everybody went to the newspaper to look for the real estate guide in the newspaper to see what homes are available and what open houses they could go to. And then we had a monthly magazine that was set out in boxes in different, in front of stores. And you had to be in that. And that one cost way more for us because we were on the back page. I had a smart broker when I started. And, but it was still like thousands of dollars a year going out in marketing. You guys can do it. You could probably market $500 a year, social media ads, pushing it out, doing stuff. And I bet you could get at least, at least 500, 600 contacts. Are they all gonna be a good contact? No. But even if you get one contact from $500, is your rate of return good? because it's going to be $12,000 in your pocket for a $500 app because 12, five for an average commission. Right? So that's where you got to look. What is where we look at business aspects of it, right? We figure our budget, we figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to market it. We're not going to overspend because we don't spend it until we got it. Right. But you need to do something to start with. And if you don't have the money to do that, then you better get your face out there and use the 500 free business cards that you get, get your face out and network until you can start making some money and going in, unless you have some money to start with, right? Start a business, utilize that to get going, but don't overspend. But you have to go, you have to go meet people and you have to talk to the people that you already know. This one's all about meeting people, right? Or not meeting, this is about knowing the people and re-meeting them in another way. So you're all gonna start out with a letter. Did you get a letter yet to introduce your people that you know, that you got started in real estate? A letter? Yeah, to email out, to hand mail out. I'm just calling the text. You're just calling the text and that's my boy. Get on them. Everybody that I know in <coughs> is very aware that I'm real estate. Oh, I know. <laughs> I just don't know as many He's new here, so. <laughs> But they, yes, they are aware. Um, but you're also calling and working out with your people down in Santa Cruz now, right? Getting them and hooking them up. They know yeah. some of them in Santa Come Cruz, on. Central Valley, East Bay. We got two people in East Bay. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And here he knows agents down there because it's his family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> On here it says, let's see if you have it on here. Bruce Hardy. Bruce Hardy uh, was just an agent. 
uh, he's from Australia, so he has a wonderful Australian accent, even many, many years later. He became a mega agent, and now he's head of our region. So we get to talk to him all the time. He's also going to be, he's going to be stepping away from that, going up even higher up. He goes and speaks and he teaches and he does stuff with Gary Keller all the time. So he has grown, but he had to learn the hard way too. We, we heard his story in another one, right? When Gary Keller was like, what are you doing? Go do this. He went and did it and his business increased dramatically in 12 months by doing what Gary Keller told him to do, which is what all this is, okay? So Bruce did open houses and talk to people and everyone that he talked to, he put into his database. Then you put him on the eight by eight and then 33, which is now a 36, because this is 2015, but still relevant. So we have a 36 text because Gary realized that people want to be talked to more often. They want more personal. So we need to touch them more often a year. This is how many times a year. And those are two different tools to stay in touch with your existing contacts. They are smart plans and command already set up and ready for you to go. So all you have to do is apply it. Make sure that if it has any, make sure it's what you want to do, right? Edit, change it, whatever you want, and then set them up on that. So at the time of this, he had over 4,700 people just by entering every single person he met. Open houses, um, <laughs> networking and he just said that um, he said I send my friends and customers information on the real estate market from time to time would you be interested in getting that I like to say I'll send you up to date marketing information so you know what what's happening in your neighborhood would you like to get that that's what our monthly neighborhood nurture is. That's what our bi-weekly neighborhood nurture is, right? It, you don't have to do anything other than put them on it and it drips and it sends it to them and it comes from you, right? What's better than that? Um, and then if they have any questions, and you can actually see if they opened it, they clicked on it to go look at, because it says they went to a landing page because it basically creates a, a, a simple web page. It has a couple deep in it, but it has a, it's a simple landing page that they go to that shows them the neighborhoods that they chose, shows them how many homes are sold in that, what's the average sales price, and it just goes in pretty deep on it, right? And they can add more neighborhoods if they want, right? So I mean, it's 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 simplified. You can put as many. So if the neighborhoods might not necessarily be one neighborhood is what we're going to look for homes for comps, right? We might go out ten neighborhoods because some of them. Are built really small but 10 neighborhoods out they're all comped homes right so that's you getting to understand the market and know the market when you put them in there on that but um just by doing this and putting them on it the eight by eights are uh simple it's a lot of like phone call hey let's do you want to meet for coffee should we go to lunch it's reminders for you to contact them okay so it's simplifying, setting you up so you don't have to remember where you're at or what you're doing. It's doing everything. It's all reminding you. So networking, it's important because people want to know that you know them, you like them, you respect them, and most importantly, we remember who they are, right? How would you like it? I can't remember what any of your names were. Did you feel like I really cared about your business? I care about your business. I'm going to remember what your name is. It might take me two times or three times from the first time I meet you, but I'm going to say it over and over until I get it. What's my middle name? <laughs> I'm going to find out so I can yell at you like I do Austin. I told you yesterday. Did you, John? I wasn't listening. I don't feel known, like, respected or Wow. <laughs> Wow, I think you do because he went to school with my cousin, even though she was two grades ahead of him. No, I remember that. That's close. 
I remember, I remember things that are important. Mm -hmm. I taught him how to use Snapchat because he has a baby. And what's better than using Snapchat on a baby? <laughs> Have you done it to your kid yet? Chris, you got to get it. I never use it. I told you to. <laughs> I only, I oh, no, it's only it for fun just, pictures uh, to have for life. Oh, yeah, yeah. I never used it. No, he doesn't I send it to anybody. Well, he sent me some. <laughs> I made my day. Like, I was having dinner with my family, and I'm like, oh, my God. My daughter loves Snapchat. If, if I open up my phone, my daughter steals my phone to... Uh, do Snapchat <laughs> pictures and she'll change them up. I got different ones on the front, different ones on the wallpaper once you get in there. But she thought that was awesome the baby pictures you sent. And they're still, I'm absolutely not. It's great. I will know. And so, do you see the importance of knowing people? We all know, right? And think about how you want to be treated, right? Do the same thing. Otherwise, it's just going to go in. Okay, truth. You want to achieve mind share, right? You want people to just automatically remember who you are. And when we talked about <coughs> the one and done agents, because I did such a great job, why wouldn't they refer me or come back to me? I don't need to stay in touch with them, right? Don't they remember what I saved them on their house or how much I got them for their house? A lot of agents do that. They think all they have to do is go, hey, sell them on their home. Let's get another one. Congrats to my lawyers. <clears throat> Not contact again, right? You want to stay on top. So everybody's brain, right? It's not who you know, it's who knows you. <laughs> we have too much going on in our head, right? It's your customer. You're up here, the other agent's down here, they got an appointment over here, they got kids, they got all this. They didn't they. They see people are mailing them stuff in the mail. You might not be doing it. You better be doing it. But if you're not doing it, someone else is. And they go to the mail and the husband and the wife are talking because it's done after we get home from work, right? We're going to the mail, we're kitchen. We're talking about, hey, I really think that maybe we should um, list our house. It's going like, great. oh, look at this. Should we use this one? Right? Oh, yeah, we've been getting these every month. That's the agent you want to be. You want to be the one that when they're thinking about it, they remember you. Or, hey, remember John walks our neighborhood all the time. He shares that marketing information with us. He, he lives in our neighborhood. He's got to know our neighborhood. That's why we talk about working in the area that you live, right? Or where you want to live. Because you're going to live there. Especially after 36 transactions. But you're going to wait too Tell them what, unless you have other sources of income, okay? Uh, achieve the mind share, you have to stay in touch. If you don't, they're gone. People may remember you in other ways. Oh my gosh, do you remember what our real estate agent, they? They bought us pizza for our moving in. What was her name? I heard it. I love my agent. Absolutely love. They did a wonderful job. We would use them again. Can't remember what office they were with. Either didn't save the phone number. They changed phones. They didn't keep their contact, whatever it is. Or you have... 800 contacts and you don't know who because they didn't label it realtor right it's all about labeling making sure that you're staying in touch and doing what you need to do um they could remember when they need help because they can go back and find their file if they saved it right it's like they're closing docs um and a good title company will include your business card in it. Now, you guys, it's so different because all closings are done by a notary at a coffee shop. So they're not getting your business card. COVID. Pre-COVID, you sit at that dang table with them and you have your business cards. You, you work with an escrow officer that you like. They have your business cards. They put it in the folders with all the closing documents and the homeowner is going to go file it, right? 
This is important documentation. We need to keep this. You want your business card in there. So if they go to sell their home, they're going to come back and they're going to go, oh, well, let's go get, let's use who we did last time. They did a great job. Go find their folder. There's the business card because they couldn't remember who you were because you haven't been marketing them over and over and over and over, calling them, inviting them to coffee, inviting them to events. Like there are so many ways that you can meet up with your clients that you should, right? Start and think about right? that all of our top producing agents are up there and every single one of them does a different client networking to stay top of mind, right? So they might remember you, but not when someone, they could be out at dinner and they can say, oh, hey, who did you use for a realtor? Oh gosh, they were great, I don't know. Don't be that, right? You want them always to be like, you want Tanya? You want Chris? My name is. My name is? John. John Click. So get on, John. <laughs> hey, you gotta <laughs> think about it. We'll get your stuff done in this click. Okay. Why is networking important? You guys notice some of this stuff is repeating? It repeats in every single class. Why? Because it's super, super important, right? So as you're doing your lead generation, you're uphill, you're calling, you're contacting, you get a client. We go pending. Right here at the top, we go pending. We start focusing on everything, we're or we're showing them homes, and then we go pending, and then we're working on the inspections, and we're doing everything that we need, and now we close. Oh crap, I don't have any other business. I gotta do my legit again. Do you see how that happens? Because people get so immersed into the one transaction or the one client that they're showing home after home and writing offer after offer after offer because that's the market we're in, that they forget about the daily activities that they need to do so that this now goes like this, okay? This is the most important thing that you could ever do in your entire business, which is why it's a month long class. It's actually, my coach brought me this and she said, you need to teach your people this. And I looked at it and I'm like, they have an instructor guide on it and it says one whole month. Okay. Here we go, right? You have to have a pipeline of leads that is full at all times. Kirk said, you've got to have 25 to 30 people at one time in your pipeline. Your pipeline's in command. So it's really easy. You've got listings and you got buyers, right? And the pipeline starts at the minute that they say, hey, I might be interested in buying or selling in the next 12 months. Bam, they start your pipeline. So it's a rolling 12 month period. Always moving, but always 12 months because that's when we're triggering to put them in it, right? If you only put them in, if they're looking to buy in the next three months, then your whole entire pipeline is only three months. And that's not sustainable. You've got to have a 12 month rolling period of your pipeline. So, and it figures, because you put in all the numbers and everything, it's like he was saying at the end, it tells you what the potential income is and what the probable income is based on where they sit at in the pipeline. Okay. Keep it full. If you have absolutely nobody in your pipeline, are you going to have a closing? No. no. <laughs> you better have some in there, right? How to network? Well, prospecting. is what we do to meet people, right? Prospecting is where we call and we visit and we ask them to work with us. Once we get them, their contact information, they become a met. The other way that we can do them is marketing. Prospecting is free. Marketing can cost money from very little to a lot. Billboards. Who wants to be on a billboard? <laughs> no, no. I've seen an agent, I won't say from what office, on 217 all the time. Oh, is she, she the one that wet the, the, the plants? Uh, yeah. I don't even remember her name. 
I don't know. And I drive 217 every single day. All I remember is I saw that and I thought. I don't even like, remember how specific. I have no idea who she was, but I just remember that yeah. being like stuck in my mind as the worst billboard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it was memorable, but. No, but was it? Because I don't know the name and I don't know the office. Well, I was going to say, I don't think it was memorable for yeah. the right reasons. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So you're going to do these things to get contacts, right? Um, real estate is a numbers game and a contact sport. If you don't have contact with people, you're not going to sell real estate. It is not a, a job that we can just stay in a room and not do anything and make money. That's Austin's job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a good one. I love Austin, Chris. He's like my little brother. Oh. I fire him every day. <laughs> Although he just says that I'm like his mother. Okay. I know. Mm. That's why he got his name called out, first name and middle name. Mm -hmm. And he come running scared, didn't he? It, there's a quaver in his voice. He was. Yes. <laughs> it was great. Okay, systematic tools for networking. The eight by eight. This is going to cement your relationship. Like I said, it's going to have like coffee dates and, and um, talking to them. And it's more of a real deep personal. So if you're the people you want to put on that are people that you really know and like, right? You might not have every single person on that one. If there's someone that you just got as a lead, they're thinking about it. We might put them on a 12 month or a different one, the 36 touch, where I'm gonna excuse me, reach out to them, but I might not take them out for coffee, right? Or I might not take them out for lunch or wine tasting or whatever it is. I'm gonna really focus my eight by eights on my core people, my A's and my B's. Okay. The 36 touch, that's the one that you definitely want to. It's maintaining a relationship. It, 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 it's really all it is. Stay top of mind, okay? That's the whole focus of this one. Stay top of mind, no matter who they are. So you're gonna put them on those. You're gonna network. <coughs> you guys, networking, community events, churches, um, schools, uh, hobbies, get involved in a sports, business groups, whatever it is that you truly love to enjoy doing, that's your networking group because it's really easy and you're gonna enjoy it. And the conversation to real estate is gonna become a lot easier because if people are actually gonna, you're, you have likes, the same likes, right? So they're really gonna engage with you. And it's gonna be so much easier to turn it into a business, okay? And then you're gonna turn them into appointments for a listing or to buy. Yeah, just like that. It works. I don't mark it at all. If I do mark it, I throw it in to teach class or to get some stats. <clears throat> all my, my marketing that I do for any business that I do, because I spend most of my time right here, you guys, is all my networking, my community outreach, my church, my um, the nonprofit that I'm in, my scuba diving on the back of my car. I guess me business and my skip diving friends business. So think about how you guys can do it where it becomes easy. That's just one field though, right? We need three different types of business coming in. All right. Three hour habit. What's our three hour habit? What do we do in the first hour? Prep. What do we do in the second hour? Do your actual stuff. The lead gen. What do we do in the third hour? Synthesize all the beef. Maintain. Yeah. Update your database, right? Prep for your calls, talking, meeting, whatever it is that you're doing, any kind of prep to know the market. Even if it's sending out emails or Facebook posts, that's what we're going to do in the second hour. And the third hour is filling in any notes of what we've talked to or, or accomplished. You guys could have it to where you combine all three of these into segments for each contact, right? So I'm gonna look at my task for the day because it's all in my command, tell me who I need to talk to. I look at the notes. I research what I need to know before <coughs> I talk to them. 
I get them on the phone. I have the conversation, find out where we're at, what the next steps or just maintaining that relationship and bonding. And I'm making notes at the same time or right after. And then I go to my next contact, right? So you don't have to do it in hourly blocks. You could do it one after the other as a contact and do all three at once, right? Does that make sense? It's all in how you work. So if you want to sit down and while you're contacting or you walk, I mean, if I'm going out in a public event and I meet someone, oh my gosh, I'm going to enter them in right now, right? Or if you're at an open house, you're going to have them fill out an open house sheet or you're going to have them fill out your online contact information so that it automatically goes into command for you. But you've got to go back and you have to make notes, right? Who was it? What were they? Who was with them? Was it a family? What are they looking for? Right, anything that you've got. If you don't have those notes, then all you have is just a name and a phone number and you have no idea what they're doing or an email, right? So this one is the most important task that you can do with um, networking, networking. We're going deep in the eight by eight. My clock is dead back there, so time is at a standstill. Nah. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's an example on here. I bet they have it on here. There we go. Okay. Um, this, this is what they used to have in the old one. I know it's somewhat different in command because it's a little bit modernized and updated, but it's kind of the same thing, right? So week one, I'm going to drop off a letter of introductions, personal brochure, a market report, business card. Um, the next week, a community calendar, current market stats, recipe card, inspirational card, a pop by, right? Whatever it is that you want to do. Week three is going to be the same thing, but a different than week two, different marketing piece. Week four, you're going to call them. Hey, this is Chris of Keller Williams Realty. Did I catch it about time? This is just a script. You don't have to go word for word. I won't take much of your time. How are you? Did you receive the market stats that I sent you? Fantastic. Do you have any questions? The reason I'm calling is because I'm trying to find out if you're buying or selling a house. So, so if you or someone you know, so you might want to change it up, right? Because the last thing you want to do is sit there and read from a script where you're on a phone because they know. Just use it as a guide of what kind of conversation I can have or do your own, right? Scripts are there to help you understand what you can say if you don't have an idea or how you can handle an objection to what was said, okay? Most scripts will have objections on them. Then the next week, you're gonna send them a free report. The next week, you're gonna send a real estate investment or house maintenance tip. Maybe we send them the quarterly magazine. I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff that we could do in command. Okay. The next one, you're going to send them, I love this, a refrigerator magnet, notepad, or other usable valuable item, not a throwaway that has your name, your logo, and your contact information. So you're going to send them something that they're going to want to keep that has your contact information that they're going to see, right? Know too that when you go in command, these are going to be much better. They're not going to be so 2015. Uh, and then the last week, we're going to call them again. So do you see what you're doing? If we look at this in another aspect, this is just ideas, right? So the first week, we're going to reintroduce ourselves. The next week, we're going to send them something that says, hey, it's Megan. The next week, we're going to remind them, hey, thank you, you, it's Megan, right? The next week, I'm actually going to call and talk to them. The next week, I'm going to send them something that will help them with the value of their home. Maybe a CMA, right? Or maybe um, something for them to help buy a home, okay? Then the next one, I'm going to talk to them about some tips, whether it's for purchasing or for selling. And then the next one, another valuable item that has my information on it. And then that finally, the eighth week, we're gonna put, we're gonna do another phone call that touches base with them again. And now remember, this is someone. So this will be something that you guys will want to do 
with the main mess that you already know right now. Okay? Because then, and they're not ready to buy or sell right now. But it's someone that you know, it's getting, hey, I started my real estate career. I'd love to work with you or anyone that you know, right? Think about different things that you can do to stay in touch. And then when you're done with the eighth week, now we're going to put them on the 36 touch, which is going to include uh, different calls. It's going to have text messages. It's going to have auto emails. I mean, you, you're going to do all kinds of stuff within that, okay? 36 touches a year. Does that seem like a lot? Yeah. For one person. You have three people. How many touches is that? Hmm. Sorry, you have 300 people. How many touches is that a year? 36 touches. 300 people in one year. Huh? I love it. Does that seem like a lot of touches that you have to do in one year? Yeah, I think so. Like a lot, right? And we're telling you 300 is your minimum contacts. Seems like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to have time to do this. And I have to show houses. And I have to write offers. And I have to do inspections. And I have to list homes. And I have to do this, right? Okay, do you want to know how simple it is? Let's take the 36. So out of the 36 things, and this is all in the 36 touch, okay? The first thing that I'm gonna do, if they're looking, if they're looking to buy or sell in the next 12 months, I'm gonna treat them differently. But let's look at someone that we're just reaching out. We don't know if they're gonna buy or sell with us, okay? So I'm gonna put them on a monthly neighborhood nurture. That's 12 times a year. How many do we have left? That's 12 times they're going to hear from me. That's me touching them. 24, 24. We have 24 left. Then I'm going to put them on my quarterly calls. How many do we have left? Then I'm going to add them to my monthly newsletter that I'm going to create because it's really simple. How many do I have left? Eight. Now I'm going to... Um, invite them to an annual set. Right? I mean, do you see how we took it so quick from 36 to eight? Now I have to think of eight other ways that I want to touch base with these people. Invite them to coffee. Bam. Seven. No, we're talking six. Because we're going to invite, we have no, 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 Some kind of annual event. We're down to six. Right? Like you guys can really chop these down really fast. And by doing that is the big stuff that we have in there. There are lots of smart plans in there that gives you all kinds of ideas of way to touch us. Oh, the quarterly magazine. That's four. Do social media touches count? Social media they're, touches. They're not like oh, their birthday. Bam. Do uh -huh. see how like you guys we can by doing the two monthly ones. Because you could do your monthly newsletter on the first of every month or the 30th or whatever. And then the, the monthly newsletter that it's an automatic report that just goes out for them to click to see what the market's doing. You can start it at the middle of the month. Like you choose when you want to start them on a smart plan. So if you always start the smart plan, the monthly neighborhood nurture, even the bi-weekly on the 15th. Now, if you've got someone who's thinking about buying and selling in the next 12 months, they're going to get that two times a month. That 36 just went, right? So you can talk to your people, touch them. We love touching. <laughs> kind of creepy, but we love to touch. Lots, and you can get this done. And now I have time to show homes, write offers, do open houses, do listings. I have time for everything else and a social life because I'm not spending my time touching people a thousand times, right? Okay, nine tips for implementing the eight by eight. Gary Keller, what did Gary Keller say or do? <clears throat> so as soon as you add someone to your network, you put them on the eight by eight. Schedule the mailings before you do the calls. Because the benefit of making the call is to say, hey, did you receive what I sent you? Right? What'd you think? You have any questions? Simple, right? So whatever you send them, make sure it's something that's going to re require them to answer that. 
Gary Keller in the MREA. This is the real estate Bible, by the way. Every real estate agent, no matter what company they're with, love this book. That's why it's a national bestseller, not just KW agents. So he says, people will call and say, hey, the eight by eight thing doesn't work. And he always challenges them and asks, so tell me how you're doing it. He listens and he hears a lot about brochures, letters, magnets, and reports. They always say, I sent out eight things in eight weeks, just like you recommend. And Gary says, what about the calls and visits? And he hears silence because they didn't do that because isn't my marketing doing it for me? And Gary's like, you didn't do the eight by eight. You have to talk to people. You have to talk to people, period. Just because you mark, send, if you just send stuff to me, it's junk, right? It's gonna go in the garbage. I might keep a couple of things, but it's not gonna mean anything. It's not until I see your face, I've talked to you on the phone, that I actually click it into place. Good timing. <laughs> He's got a great last name. Click. All right, hang out already? Just kidding. Thank you. You're welcome, Chris. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, all right. So make sure you do that. Make sure you always add something to value, right? <clears throat> always think about what would you like to get. And if you don't know what a guy might want to get or a girl might want to get, ask someone, right? What would make you, what, what would you want to receive that you would keep that would have my information or that would just trigger, right? I do the same thing with closing gifts. I don't do, I, I make my closing gifts are very personal based on the person. Now the tax at IRS is that we're only allowed so much, $25 a gift. Did it go up a little bit? But if we put our information on it somewhere, it could be on the back, or they won't even see it. It's not promotional materials. And now it's tax write off, right? Not just $25, mm -hmm. but make it personal, right? Is it kind of if you just like, attach your business card to it? Yeah. Yeah. Like if you got like a gift certificate to a fancy restaurant or something. Did you know you can get, get gift certificates customized with your logo on it? No. Starbucks does it. But what if I want to get them something nicer than the Starbucks? I know. <laughs> Nothing's nicer than Starbucks. I mean, I know for you it's as good as gold, but like. Especially how much I spend there every uh -huh. week. I drive four teenage girls to school every week, every day. Plus caffeinated five. teenage girls. But then they have to give me money. So, so we're going to schedule our mailings and we're going to call everybody that's on my calendar, right? Because if we don't call them and we don't talk to them, we didn't do our eight by eight. Modify the eight by eight, make sure it works for you. Um, because if, if you if you just go by what's in there and you're not gonna do it, then you're not doing it, right? <laughs> be like but they're on the eight by eight. Yeah. <laughs> so um, some modifications that are included, change it to a 12 by 12. Instead of six mail outs, do two telephone calls and four mail outs and four telephone calls. Substitute a personal visit instead of one of the phone calls. Um, don't do less than the eight weeks though. You've got to do the eight weeks. And I can tell you, you know, we always bring up Alex and um, Peter, because Alex is always, he's very intentional with his database. And he always put everybody on the plans. And those plans told him, hey, you got to do this. Hey, you got to do this. And he would do it. And their business is very successful because of it. Um, don't forget to ask about knowing if anyone, if they're not buying, how, 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 do you know anyone that potentially could be in the market for buying or selling? A kid, 
getting divorced, right? Think of your, your way of asking for the referral that doesn't make you uncomfortable. That doesn't seem like, I don't know. Some people are fine. Like you heard Kurt. Hey, do you know anyone that's thinking about your sound real estate? That's not me. I can't do that, right? Don't forget I can help anybody that you know, right? Don't forget to mention me. I just find your, your way that makes, makes it easy for me to say that. And always, 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 always notes, right? Take the notes. If you don't update your database with the information of what you've done or what you said or what they said, then you're never, it's not working. It's not gonna work for you. Um, okay, let's think about customizing this real quick, because this is actually really good. Okay. Eight by eight, so we're on page 26. So, um, the first one, FISBOs. Does everyone know what a FISBO is? For a subway owner. And everybody in their world is calling that, or everyone in the world, not in their world, in the world is calling them about listing them, listing their home with them as a real estate agent. Right? We've talked about, we don't do that. And we can, but you want to really make them happy, call them about being a potential buyer for you. Where are you going? What are you doing? And if I have a buyer, would you pay a commission? Right? Um, in here it says, you know, you, you can say I work with buyers in your neighborhood. So if you're calling them, you could say, I would love to help market your home. Um, uh, <coughs> I like the, <coughs> I like, I personally like, I know you're getting called by a ton of agents. I want to know if I have a buyer that is interested in your property, will you pay a commission to me if I, if I sell? That's a good way in. That makes it, oh, sometimes they'll be like, oh, I'm not paying everyone. Oh, fine. So what are you going to do when you move, right? Simple conversations. The next one, expires and withdrawals. So this is kind of the same thing on that one too. Expires and withdrawals, you guys, if you're going to go that route, you find them in RMLS, number one, right? But you have to research. Sometimes they'll be relisted. Maybe they took it off and relisted it with the same agent. You got to look and make sure that it is not relisted first. So that's going to require you to print out the list and then go search each address and make sure it's not in there with someone else before you call them. Because if you do call them and it's listed with someone else, now you're soliciting and you're going to get in trouble. Okay. Um, buyer, follow up for prospective buyers. Um, don't pay too much. How to get pre-approved. How to send them to your website for searches. Um, you, I mean, you can just hit anything right on a buyer. Um, seller, prospective sellers. Uh, you could talk about knowing the neighborhood. If you had some closes, you can really right now, everybody's house is selling faster than the competition. But, <laughs> um, you know, just think of the different things that you could do to help promote them to get a better deal. I think for, because the market is easy for a seller, right? In everybody's mind, it's really easy. All you have to do is put it in MLS and put it on the internet and it's sold. Um, but you can come in with your negotiation skills, right? Um, you can go in and uh, understanding and helping them determine what, what offer is the best offer to accept. And it might not always be the highest offer, right? Because we're going to look at all terms. So just like hitting it in different ways. Um, let's see, geographic farm. So that could be sharing uh, recent sales activity. Talk about tax prep, um, that you live in the neighborhood. The niche farms, right? So that's not a geographic, that's gonna be commonalities that you have with people. Um, so that, that one's easy. That one should be super easy because you're gonna talk to them about whatever you're into, right? Comic books? Right, Are comic artists? No, that's not you. I have two Chris's right now <laughs> at the exact same time. Yeah. 
and and one I think it's the other Kristen that does comic books and stuff but right so his would be like comic con yeah. oh you network the heck out of that what time I'm meeting with him at 3 30 today <laughs> right but think about that you know guys I use it over and over in my networking with my disabled scuba divers right I'm on the I'm on the board I don't have to do anything like they just know I'm a real estate agent and but because of how much I care and about what I do with what they see me working with they're putting the two and two together they know I teach and coach agents but because of what I do there they see what I do here and they want me to utilize and, and to use me to help them buy or sell without me doing a thing. And you guys want business, so you're gonna do a little bit more, but right, just find something that you really, really truly love. <coughs> um, and don't put all your eggs in that basket. Open house visitors. Um, Y'all have to do an open house training with me before you do an open house. And um, I prefer that you shadow with an existing agent. Bradley will let you shadow with him. Uh, Bradley has, is a new agent who graduated from us uh, about a year ago. And um, he is really good at what he does and he's very young. So um, he's happy to help people with that. Chris, that was just in here. Chris is a, a producing agent and he will let you shadow him. Rochelle, Rochelle is um, an existing agent who has 14 plus thousand followers on TikTok. She'll let you follow her. I, I can ask anybody and let you shadow. I want you to shadow. You can shadow as much as you want to. You have to at least do one before you go to your own open house because I want you to see, and I like if you do a couple different people because everybody has different styles, right? Uh, to understand how they have conversations, how they present it, what they do before. There is so much you do. It is not just opening up the door and waiting and letting people in. There's so much more than that. And if you're not utilizing it to the max that you can do, the way I teach you to do it, then you're wasting your time sitting in the house for two hours. Okay, so we, we, we go through that in depth. Um, and then uh, allied resources. So that's, that's the people that you use for other things, contractors, plumbers, whatever. I send you business, you send me business, right? We go deeper than that, but um, you wanna work on that. So there's a customizable eight by eight on page 27 that you can work on. And now let's go to 36 touch. How are we doing? 15 minutes. Okay, 36 touch is, here you go, right here. This is the overkill over time approach, right? To ensure that your year round contact with your mats. It means that you never have to worry that they're gonna forget you or someone else is gonna get mind share because you are touching them 36 times a year, okay? Um, 18 touches, we went through what we do, right? So you got Mother's Day, Father's Day cards, you got birthday wishes, um, which is two touches because you get a card and a phone call. Third touch, Facebook, mm -hmm. right? Three touches are telephone calls and eight touches is a thank you or thinking of you. You guys can make it whatever you want, right? There's tons of different, um there you guys there's I think there's thousands of smart plans now because every agent that creates a smart plan you can share it and so all you have to do is search keywords and then you'll get every single one that any agent has created and shared and then you kind of find out who the key ones are that are really successful google them mm -hmm. see how busy they are I want to follow that agent right the meeting with Austin, does he like show us where to find all that stuff? Uh -huh. Is that in the one-on-one? Okay. Mm -hmm. And follow up. He kind of goes a brief overview in the in the main one. You guys can meet with Austin as often as you need for any of the tech stuff with command. He's also every Wednesday available either for a one-on-one -on -one or just available <coughs> for um from 1:30 to 3:30 every Wednesday. So for you guys, 
I just barge in there all the time. Like, awesome help. Yeah. You can stop whatever he's doing. Help but on Wednesdays, it's after two because it's 1 30 to 2 in my class. <laughs> I like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know where to find you. Okay. So, same thing with the eight by eight, you guys. You have to plan, you do it. You delegate it. You you can like if you don't like to do this, you can hire someone to do it for you. You use your command to do it for you, right? The other part of delegating is if you need marketing materials and someone to create your designs and your newsletters and all that stuff. Um, they have templates in there. They have all kinds of ideas, or you can go pay for services that will create them for you, right? Um, <coughs> Make your three calls a year. I actually, um, I prefer the four. You can have three. Actually, I think they incorporated four and you're going to have the quarterly calls. So you're actually going to call them about eight times a year. Uh, but remember, you can tie those to different things. Home anniversary, anniversary, birthday, um, just because, checking in, happy, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, uh, happy new year. Right? There's so many holidays you can call. Hey, what are you doing for the fourth? Let's call. Right? Um, handwritten notes after each phone call. Really great catching up with you yesterday. Be good or bad if you have really good meetings, right? Is it more character or Some more character? I have bad handwriting. I used to have really pretty, you know, the real I'm 80s, right? 70s, 80s girls. So the real bubbly, like really pretty. And then I joined the military and I had to sign a sack of papers that was this tall, and my handwriting went up. <laughs> so I can slow down and write really nice. It's it worse when I slow down. <laughs> Then don't slow down and write really fast. Charge Change it to block. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you could also print it in ink um, using a font. There's also this thing called uh, AM cards that you can pay for, and they have handwriting um, font that really looks like you hand wrote it and it's a nice card that you can send out. You guys will get them from us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give value, be a giver. Everybody wants to receive, right? Give, follow up, give more, follow up, receive. How great is it if they send you something and then give back? There's a whole list in here on page um, 31 that has the list of all the different types of things that you can give. So, yeah, I mean, you got to think about what you're going to give. They're not talking gifts. They're talking information, right? You guys, there's information and reports. You just got to Google. Go to NAR. Log into your NAR. They have all kinds of articles and everything that you can share and give, and but you can make it personal, too. You can do whatever you want, right? <coughs> Get personal scripts. Huh? We love scripts. Don't we, John? Love them. Because I make John read them all. Yeah. Let's read the first one. <clears throat> Adrian. Hello, this is John Click from Keller Williams Realty. How are you? Did you happen to receive the Rubik's Cube that I sent you? Did you have a chance to look at it? The reason I'm calling is to find out who you know who might be selling, buying, or selling their house. Rubik's cube. Does it have your logo on it? That's pretty sweet. It does. Each little is your face on around. each side and a different your baby with a Snapchat. Uh -huh. a little George Michael view now. Yes. All right. Agent. Hello. Quick <coughs> from Keller Williams Realty. How are you? Did you happen to receive the Rubik's cube? <laughs> Another one. It's a different person. Oh. Um, or is this a follow up? No, I'm sorry. Yeah, it could be that's great. Do you have any questions? Just a quick reminder: if you happen to know anyone who will be buying or selling, could you provide me with their name? Is there anything I can do for you today? So that that's a that's a good key reminder right there. You asked for their contact information because 99% of the time, 
Oh yeah, I'll have them call you. Nope. They aren't gonna call you. They're, they might share your information if they remember to do it. How many people forget what they were gonna do five seconds later? Right? Mm -hmm. Distraction. Squirrel. <laughs> right? I mean, it was just fun when we had meetings in the front room because squirrels actually run by and it goes squirrel. <laughs> His name's Bob, by the way. Fluffy, fluffy. Bob. 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 I named him Bob. Oh. Um, so you have to ask for the contact information. So I got squirrel down. I still remember to come back. <laughs> Get their information. Otherwise, it, it's they're not going to do it right or if it's someone you know yeah 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 you never give them my information or they never call me so I'll give me their give me their number you're going to treat people differently right if you know that if it's like my sister I'm going to tell my sister that right but if it's someone I don't know I'm going to say you know very nicely may I have your contact information I'd love to reach out to them and blah 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 blah, blah, blah. right that was really good listening Telephone calls and pop buys, the glue that holds your action plans together, right? This is getting personal. We want to do the mental association of you with everything that they've received or heard on the phone. We talked about that one guy, right? That darn Andy. That darn Andy. Darn Andy. Andy. Marketing. Andy would go and get colored paper and black print base, like so ugly. <clears throat> I think he probably could have been a little bit more personal with it, but he would just roll it up and go stick it in people's doors in the neighborhood that he was farming. And he would do it every single month. And he would hear that darn Andy keeps on leaving his flyer in our door. And he goes, and sure enough, over time, when they're ready to buy it, when they're ready to buy another house or sell their house, they call the darn Andy. Because every month, and he walks, and he knocks, and he calls, and he does all the touches. But they clicked it. I'm just going to keep using that every time. They just connected the pieces together. And now that's what you guys have to do, right? Otherwise, you're wasting your funds in one thing if you're not following up with that personal touch. you got to get personal. Everybody's got to get personal. Have a Midas touch. It's not like a break store or something. Is it time? Oh, it's close. I gotta it's go. close. I okay. I have to pick up a new Oh, for birds. John's a bird guy. Oh, See, fun. that's his group. Yep. Okay. And you know what? Hmm. Ladies at the uh, Audubon Society. Yeah. They're getting my card. Yes, they are. And you're going to get their information, right? Uh -huh. You're going to open up your command on your phone and you're going to enter their contact into the database. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm going to send a Rubik's Cube. <coughs> a Rubik's Cube with your baby's face all over uh -huh. it? Yeah. You know, thanks, Tanya. You're welcome, we'll John. I'll see, see you Monday. All right. So Steve Chadler, the Steve Chadler team, wants, him, wants his network to know he cares and has the best interest at heart. Every time he does a comparative market analysis, he calls his network in that area with a simple script to let him know he did research on the neighborhood. He simply says, hey, I've been doing some research on the market in your neighborhood. The values of your homes once again prove you made a great investment. He's not calling to ask them for a deal. He's sharing valuable information, right? And the more you get to know the people, know their anniversary date, know what they bought it for, see what the housing prices are. Holy moly, did you know that your home increased in value 24% from last year to this year? Huh, right? That's getting in there and knowing. Okay, we got five minutes. Uh, unfortunately, Chris, this is what I usually do because we engage and we talk and then yeah. We don't finish, and then I speed through it, and then tell you guys go do your homework. Do your homework. Be consistent, you guys. You want to put it on autopilot because that is consistent for you. It's not waiting and relying on you to do what you need to do, unless it's time to make a phone call and time to do mail out something. And if it's not automated, you better be doing it right. And if you have it auto on autopilot in command, it's going to come up as a task for you to do every single time. 
okay? And um, make sure that during that three hour time period that you are doing the contacts, kiss, keep it simple, salesperson. <laughs> they need to be touched, not bedazzled. This is so like almost 80s. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right. Uh, another story from Bruce Hardy. He kept in touch with his car salesman. His car salesman did not keep in touch with him. Do you think he used his car salesman again? Bruce purchased over 10 years. Okay, let's read this because this is actually really good. Bruce Hardy bought a car in 1994 and from that day forward, he kept in touch with the car salesman, mailing him something on a regular basis. In 2004, 10 years later, the salesman actually called Bruce and he sold him a $350,000 house. But here's the interesting thing. Over those 10 years, Bruce purchased four cars from other salespeople and never once thought to call the salesman for the car because he didn't keep in touch with him. He didn't stay top of mind, right? Yeah. Constant, but this car salesman contacted Bruce 10 years later because Bruce stayed in touch with him. How funny is that? How odd is that when Bruce pulls up and he's in a different car? <laughs> Ouch. Same thing. If you don't stay in touch with your people and you call them out of the blue and they go, oh, we just bought our house. You guys are gonna feel like you got stabbed in the heart. Okay. Know your cost. We're big about your budget, right? Super big. Millionaire real estate talks about red light, green light, profit and loss. Don't spend it unless you got it. There's a whole bunch of things about running a business properly, right? And so we're going to make sure that we're doing that even when we're doing our marketing. Don't overspend in your marketing until you have money coming in. Never overspend in your marketing. We actually talk about this when I do goals. Um, a good business is to have 40% profit. No, no. Okay. So then we have 30% cost of sales. And we have 30% expenses. Okay. Expenses are going to get paid out no matter what, whether I make money or I don't make money. We're never gonna go over 30%. If you go over 30%, it comes from somewhere. We never go over our cost of sales of 30%, okay? The cost of sales is what gets paid if you get paid, all right? If you go, if you beg from one, <laughs> borrow from the other, right? One's gonna go up. So let's say that you're, Expenses are down at 20%. Your cost of sales are going up because you end up doing a lot of referrals and that comes from your cost of sales, okay? So our cost of sales is gonna hit up to about 40%. And then all of a sudden, this new marketing comes up and I wanna spend money for that. And now I have that one at 40%. This one's at 40, this one's at 40. What's going down? Your net. <laughs> We don't want to take from our net because if our net goes down less than 40, we're not a profitable business anymore, right? So we really watch our numbers and we watch what we do and we pay attention to our budget. We pay attention to our profit and loss statement. You guys go on it, you, you'll, you'll get in that, okay? It's important to have that and have a, have a successful business. Is it before tax or after tax? That 40% is Before, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Paying taxes. <laughs> okay, um, there's a formula on here for figuring out what your costs are. You guys don't have any yet, so we didn't need to worry about it. Um, we're gonna go into, you still have a lot left, don't we? Um, uh, not really. Modify the 33 touch, it's 36 touches. I told you guys how to modify it, right? Go research, look at all the ones that are out there. Take one and then just edit it so it makes sure it has your name on it. Because I have had someone send one out <laughs> that someone else created and every email in there it said from Nick. And then she goes, I don't understand what's happening. And they're asking who Nick is. Did you read your smart plan before you sent it out? <laughs> you borrowed someone else's and it was customized to them. So customize it to you, okay? Networking your inner circles. 
There we go. Your inner circles, right? And again, we've talked about this over and over, and we'll talk about it over and over again, I'm sure. Allied resources, have a legion strategy for them. Your advocates, have them for them. Your core advocates, how everyone's going to get different, right? Based on who they are and how you want to reach out to them. Um, there is a, a, a sheet on page 40 that you can walk through that pulls out like title company, loan officers, mortgage companies, property inspectors, attorneys, accountants, builders, make your own, right? Uh, and then different questions, like what can you provide to them instead? So it's going vice versa, right? And then there is a business exercise on page 41 each quarter, like who do I give my business to? And where is it coming from them? So that's just tracking. And command does that for you too. As long as you're keeping, as long as you add to the resource, uh, the, the source that it came from when you enter the contract, it's gonna track all of it for you. And it's in one, one easy report, okay? Uh, your allied resources, you wanna visit with them one-on-one -on -one several times a year. Educate them on how to communicate your value and then remind them that your business depends on referrals. But if you have it as a one-way street, are they gonna to wanna to send people to you? If all you're asking for is from them? So find a way that you can give back to them as well. How can you help them with their business? Not by giving people to them necessarily, but on how to get a better business, okay? Um, advocates, same thing. People have done business with you in the past, become raving fans. Um, don't entrust their loyalties to memory. They're not gonna remember you forever, right? You have to stay top, top of mind with them as well. Send them items of value, read them about once a month. Everything that's, everybody that's in here, you're gonna have them on those um, touches so that they're getting it in addition to your customer base. Because remember, every single one of these people could be a customer too, right? Core advocates. How many have you met in the past month? How do you plan to meet with them in the coming month? You gotta know. Coffee dates are easy, right? Or lunches, especially if it's someone you like. Everybody wants to know what's going on in your world and how you're doing. And then I always, I, I say it a lot. I say it all the time, but it's so true. Hi, how's it going? What did you do today? I started in real estate or I went and showed a house today or anything. You don't have to say, don't forget I'm a real estate agent. Come up with a story or have a story that will trigger them to go, oh my gosh, that's right, you sell real estate. They'll ask you what the market's doing. Or I've seen that the market's crazy. Talk to them about it. We share all of that here in our weekly meetings to give you something to talk about, right? Um, referrals through your network. So <coughs> according to NAR, the average homeowner owns their home for about 12 years. That roughly translate, translated means that for every six people that you know, one will sell their home in any given year. So if your network, your network is 216 people and six of them, or divide that by six, right? Every six people you know, 36 deals in one year. If, imagine that each of them knows six people, that adds to it, right? And so now you can have a potential 216 deals in one year. Do you see how fast it can grow if you're doing a good job networking? Yeah. Um, okay, work for your referrals. You have to educate people. You have to educate them with knowledge. You have to educate them. I'm jumping ahead. Um, you have to educate them about the market, about your value, your experience. Um, you'll get experience. You can use our experience, right? And then ask for it and then reward them. Take them out to lunch. Take out, take, look, if you have a closing, 
and you make $12,500 on that closing because someone sent them your way? Do you think taking and uh, having the, giving them a $100 gift card to a dinner for husband and wife is a great thank you for sending business their way? Right? Mm -hmm. Think of a great way to be thoughtful. You can't give them a referral because that's not legal, mm -hmm. but we can sure gift them with something, okay? Educate. Your job is to educate them on the value you place on referrals and what to do if they do have someone. Everybody knows someone that is a potential, right? Oh my gosh, my best friend's getting divorced. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> right, you're not going to do that. But <laughs> is that a potential sale? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can help them with doing a CMA on the home so they need it for the divorce. Mm -hmm. Could be a sale, right? It might not, but you helped them out. Mm -hmm. Okay, they all need it for divorce. Uh, they're having a baby. They live in a one bedroom. They're living in a two bedroom and now they're having the second kid. Boy to girl. Ding, 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 ding. Right? Uh, but the biggest thing, you guys, yes, we can help everybody buy and sell a house, but we got to remind them about the value of our knowledge and our experience and the market and our negotiation skills because all of that is anyone can sell them a house, right? But everything that we can provide and bring to them and all those other values that I shared you guys, right? That we can do to help them sell their house for the most money. We wanna get them the most money in their pocket. We can do that here. You can do that. You can do that, okay? And if they have a referral, you wanna meet them. You wanna get their contact information so that you can talk to them and you wanna get in front of them as quick as possible, okay? Um, on your own, a guided self-study. What page are we supposed to be on? Page 52, woohoo. So um, take this back and um, this will be your homework. Self-guided study on your own time that you're gonna go through on how you can educate your clients, okay? Part of this comes back to your branding, your, your USP, your value and your validity. Um, and you won't get what you don't ask for, right? There's a, there's a script in there too that you can work on. And then not everyone asks for that referral. So there's scripts on page 53 and 54. On 55, there's a writing. You can write, you can send notes, cards. Another self-guided study, 55 and 56, to help you um, determine what you're gonna ask. And like finding, you're finding your own words, right? And then how to reward them. Um, they have a bunch of stuff, massage, flower, plant, free hat, one-on-one -on -one lunches, a client appreciation dinner, movie passes. Like even if you're, let's say that you have, you end up with six poor people, 10 poor people that you send you referrals every year. Well, maybe I'm gonna have a client appreciation party. Maybe I'm gonna have a special dinner. Maybe I'm gonna have a special movie showing. Maybe I'm gonna have um, a wine tasting event, whatever it is, right? And then they bite into it and they make it an annual thing because they're core people that consistently provide you business because they are, they love what you do, right? The more they love what you do, then the more they're gonna send people to you. Um, and then on page 58, um, is, uh, you're going to create an advocate appreciation plan who referred business to you. So it's, it's again, just kind of same things, right? Working on that. There's also, um, 
uh, uh, the 33 touch, which you have to just bump it up to 36 touch on page 59. Remember we talked about having a different touch for each type of per person that it is, each type of referral. And then final thoughts, right? It comes back down to the money again, your gross commission, and you can change that, cross off that 7,500 and make it 12.5 and see how much those numbers change. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> you will, and that's okay. That's what I'm here for, right? Okay, so your lead gen worksheet. There's one of these like on every every class we do. There's a worksheet that talks about your lead gen hours, what you want to achieve, and how you're going to get there. There's the power of one that talks about time blocking your calendar and sticking to it. And then here's a calendar sample on the very last page. That way you can like use a pencil or a pen and start to create your calendar before you actually put it on your Google calendar or whatever calendar you use. I like the Google calendar because uh, a lot of a lot of different companies and stuff always add it to your Google calendar, right? It's the simplest. And we have our, our KWS Gmail Google. So um, it's a good idea to get an idea of what you're going to do every day. And every day can be different, right? But making sure that we're hitting all of our activities that we need to do. Yay? Yeah, thank you. What do you think, Chris? It's a lot, but it looks very useful. Um, I have tons of ideas in my head. <laughs> I must be very busy. You are going to be very busy. <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. Yeah. Austin, you can stop recording. Alexa, turn off the projector. Here's the thing. <laughs> you are going to have 